thrive. They want to see their church uh, be a tremendous force and power for good in their community. One of those gatherings is called the Lay Ministry Academy. It takes place at Claremont. And just a couple of weeks ago, I had the privilege of teaching there. And, and this is a group of people. They've been together six times over the last two years. And this is actually their last gathering at the church, or at another church in the community. And uh, people were just going around telling what had happened since the last time they were together. Well, one of the women told a story about her brother. Her brother married this beautiful woman. They had this fantastic, wonderful relationship. They, they clicked at every level except one. They had beautiful children. Life was good. But there was only one thing that was different for them. He, he had claimed that he wanted Jesus to be his Lord. He had realized that when he said that, that, that changed his life. And his life had been different. But she had never made that claim. She, she had deep questions. She had deep challenges. Questions that you've had. Questions that I've had. Is this God real? Did he really rise from the dead? Why are you worshiping somebody? Why are you giving your time? Why are you giving your money? To a church that, a group of people, I'm just not sure I believe. They've been married for 20 years. He had always believed. She had never believed. But over a season, just over the last six months or so, he began to sense that something was different from her. She had been always very happy and vibrant and plain giving. But something began to change, and the life just seemed to get darker in spirit. She, she wasn't as, as joyful. She, she has a pretty spectacular job, and she's always, it's her life is just kind of chaos in the office. The things are everywhere piled up. Imagine a uh, a doctor or a lawyer or somebody with, you know, piles and piles of stuff just all over their desk. She called him up one day and she said, sweetie, we need to talk. And so he went down to her office. He could immediately tell something was different because her desk was clean. He had never seen her desk clean before. <laughs> and she opened up a drawer and she pulled out something he had never seen her have. They had never talked about it. They've never had one in their house. Was that and she put it on the desk and she said, honey, she didn't say this exactly. <clears throat> she said, my life is not well. You have something that I do not have and I do not understand, but I want you to tell me why you believe. Because <clears throat> I need hope. <clears throat> <clears throat> I didn't make this story up. All right. I, I, I personally, I can't imagine that ever happening to me. Wow. I, I can't imagine that ever happening to me. But I do, I do know people who have been that, that desperate at times. Tell me the reason that you have hope. Now, when Peter was writing these words to the church, the early church, they, they were people, they were still trying to figure out who is this person, Jesus? Why should I believe? What is this about? And so he tells them these words. He writes to the church these words. Now, now I'm, not a very, I'm not very good at memorizing scripture passages. My, my, my children, I think, have memorized more of the Bible than I have. But let me tell you, these, these words I remember. I remember. I'm not sure even which version of the Bible it is, but this is the way I remember these words that were read earlier. It, it always revere Christ as Lord. Revere Christ as Lord in your heart. Mm -hmm. And always be ready to give the reason for the hope you have. And do this with gentleness and respect. Now, I, I, I'm a professor of mission. I, I try not even to use this word, evangelism. Yeah, Cal Hart is ever more evangelism. A lot of my students, they really wish that we never had to use that word. <laughs> because that word, there, there's, a, there's a lot of baggage around that word. <laughs> but sometimes when I'm preaching, I try actually not to use this word. But let me tell you, I don't know a more beautiful concept. When you think of the word evangelism, all it means is to tell the good story you know in Jesus. Yeah. You're not trying to manipulate anybody. You're not trying to coerce anybody. As best I can tell.
tell Jesus never manipulates a single person. He never coerces them. He never forces them. He just says, I am the son of the living God. In your, in your hearts, revere Christ as Lord. Always be ready mm -hmm. to give the reason for the hope you have. Can you say that word? In your hearts, in your heart, revere Christ revere. as Lord. Christ always, be Lord. Ready. always be ready to give the reason, to give the reason for the hope you have. For the hope you have. have. Mother Teresa, right as she was starting to get well known for her ministry in Calcutta, she started to be invited around the world to, to speak and to tell the story of what she